Again, third video. I haven't put out that many videos, and all of a sudden three in like less than two hours. So this one's going to be about RVing, my experience, uh, what I would recommend, and just some just my experiences. I don't know what else to say. So, so the first thing about uh, RVing, camper, whatever you want to call it, um, is you have to pick your truck. Now, I'm not going to get in the Ford, Toyota, Dodge, Chevy bullshit. Pick your truck. Um, if you're going to go, you know, 8,000 or bigger, I would probably get a diesel. That's me. Uh, that's just me. Maybe you're different. I know half tons will tow up to 10,000. Uh, that's the first thing. Second thing, I, I just put airbags on the back of the truck. If you want to manually inflate them, that's fine. If you want to put a little uh, kit in it where you can self-inflate it from the cab, however, however you want to do it, airbags. In my case, if you have a diesel, get a tuner. Uh, I think it was Jason's affordable diesel in Arizona, Tucson, Arizona. Uh, he said go with PPE because Bulldog and a couple others, all they do is bypass the computer system or, tr or trick the computer system, whereas... The PPE tuner actually sets the program. How true that is, I don't know. It sounded good. He has perfect reviews. You can actually check him out. Uh, Jason's Affordable Diesel in Tucson, Arizona. I'll put a link in the bottom of the video and check him out. Uh, I, the last time I checked, they had like 17 reviews, all five stars. Statistically, you would think that that, was, that would be different, but he's worth it. Go, go check him out. Uh, anyway, so the big thing with picking a camper. Do not... And this is me saying this to myself from four or five years ago. Do not get a triple axle. Don't do it. That's what I've got. It turns, it, the, the turning radius is shit. It's harder than hell to get, to back it in anywhere. It's not harder than hell. It's just harder because the turning uh, radius is abysmal. It takes longer to put it in a place and it, it just, it makes me sad. It makes me a sad panda. Uh, so don't do it. The other thing I would say is less is more. Uh, a lot of the stuff like electric fireplace, you know, those are nice for like the aesthetics and yes, it's, you know, soothing and relaxing and everything else. But if it goes bad, then you have to buy another one. Whereas if you didn't have the fireplace, then you could just buy ceramic heaters from Walmart all day long for 40 bucks. And then when they break, just throw them away, go get another one. So it's a little bit harder in that case. Um, as far as... Let's see, what else? Um, it depends on what your storage needs are. Like, I live in my camper, so I've got everything I need. I have a washer-dryer hookup in it. Uh, I got a Splendid XC2100, I think. From what I've read, always get a vented washer-dryer. Um, the big thing with it is your clothes, if you don't get them out immediately or if you overload it, your clothes will come out wrinkled as hell. So... Make sure you get them out. Um, but that's not been an issue. I've had no issues with it. I had it for five years. Runs like a top. Knock on wood. Um, which brand to pick? Honestly, the biggest thing that I've had with my Heartland Cyclone is that the things that have went wrong on it are not Heartland's fault, essentially. But it's the same thing as if you bought a Mercedes-Benz. I've made this point before in a previous video. If you buy a Mercedes-Benz and they have a recall on the steering wheel because it just falls off, but it's made by Ford, it's still attached to Mercedes product, so you associate that with that product. So the things that have went wrong in my camper have been um, the drum brakes on the axles. I had to have all three of those replaced, plus the wheel bearings. Um... Water pump has been replaced four times. Why it keeps going bad, I don't know. I mean, it's a water pump. You would think it would be fairly simple to keep functioning, but it's not. Uh, the generator. I had an Onan generator. Those are bulletproof. And from what I've talked, from other people I've talked to, they've never had any issues either. I had to have it worked on three times because it was only firing on one cylinder the whole time I'd owned it. Um, and speaking of generator, the other thing to notice, if you do have a generator in your camper, I'm just going to warn you, I wouldn't do it anymore. Do not get a generator in your camper. Just buy one. Because if you'll notice the exhaust port, make sure your furnace isn't. Well, there's a couple things. Make sure wherever the exhaust is, look and see where your furnace is. Because if your furnace is directly above that exhaust and you're in the wintertime and you're in the camper pulled off the side of the road in Montana and you kick your furnace on, well, it sucks all that damn exhaust into your camper. Kind of makes you sick. Just saying. Um, and the other thing is, if you have slide outs on the uh, exhaust side, that exhaust is going to seep in through the slide out. It's just one of those things. It's just an annoyance. Get get a portable generator. 
then you can put it in the bed of your truck or you can put it out somewhere where the wind can take the exhaust somewhere other than inside your camper. It's kind of hard to live that way, I'm just saying. Um, although I'm getting ready to upgrade to a Cyclone with it. It has a real bathtub in it, so that's pretty cool. Uh, which brand? Um, I chose Heartland. I said in a previous video, I think I'm going to eat my words, that I would never buy another Heartland Cyclone. They put bathtubs in theirs now, and I'm a bathtub kind of guy, so I'll probably get one with a bathtub. Um, the other thing, if you're going to buy a camper, let's say you're like me and you travel and you stop at wherever and you go to bed, make sure the slide out doesn't block the bed. That's also an issue. It's not an issue for me in this particular camper, but it's some of the new ones that I've noticed. Sometimes the slide out blocks the bed and you can't even get back to the bedroom. So you'd have to actually put the slide out out, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but let's say the slide out malfunctions and it's malfunctioning in the out position or it it doesn't work now. You can't get to the bed. But that's just that's just a little observation that I've that I've found. Um, everything else, less is more. Uh, central vacuum, just you know, it's it's easier just to buy a Dyson because again, the central vacuum system goes out. Now you've got to go find another one, install it. Everything else, uh, a Dyson, let's say, goes bad. You just throw it away and go buy another one. Um, that's the big thing. Dual pane windows. I highly recommend getting dual pane windows just for sound and extra insulation. Uh, you can tape up your windows. Um, let's see. I know there's something I'm forgetting. Uh, with your gas oven, you kind of have to watch it. Let's say uh, when I bake brownies, if it takes 20 minutes to cook, you have to open the oven at 10 minutes and flip it and spin it around to the other side because the oven doesn't cook even. Now, whether that's a malfunction with my oven, I don't think it is, but uh, that's something I've noticed. Uh, miles per gallon, I have did a video on that. Uh, with the tuner improvement, it's three axles, it's 40 feet. Um, I get 11 to 13 now with the tuner before I got 7.5 to 9.5. Um, but that's it. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. I'm just specifically speaking for the toy hauler. That's what I know. So And Heartland Cyclone is what I own. Generally, when you're picking a brand, they're all going to be relatively the same um, with little caveats as far as options and features. But if you have any other questions, feel free to ask me, and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. Peace out.